Right on with speaker. Resource constraints. Slow case processing and corruption prolong suspect pre-trial detention. This is why many accused persons unlawfully spend months or years in detention before trial. This violates due process and fair trial since it impacts people, families, and communities. Our, speaker, our colleagues who just returned from jail, who were brutally arrested as they were going for a press conference, the Honorable Francis Zake, Honorable Tevandeke Charles, and Honorable Hassan Chirumira, told us of many inmates they found in police detention facilities. Here at CPS, people have been there for weeks. It is wrong. And we must be able to address these issues. The other example, we have so many national unity platform and other opposition supporters languishing in various detention centers on trumped up charges. Secondly, including NRM. Secondly, there have been cases where suspects of minor offenses have been jailed for longer than the maximum sentence they would have received if convicted. This is indicative of a justice system that is not only slow, but also indifferent to the plight of the less privileged. Right about speaker and colleagues, the lack of timely and fair adjudication has fostered a culture of impunity in our country where those with power and resources exploit the system to their advantage. Furthermore, the judiciary struggles with severe resource constraints, and these have manifested in various forms, such as inadequate court facilities, insufficient staff, limited access to legal databases, and other necessary tools to do their work. The rampant corruption within the police force and other internal affairs departments is a cancer eating away at the very fabric of our society. Bribery and favoritism are not just occasional occurrences. They are the norm, unfortunately, and they severely undermine justice and security. There are widespread reports and incidents of excessive use of force, arbitrary arrests and torture. These abuses are often directed at political, op political opponents and even ordinary citizens. For example, during political gatherings, the police routinely uses excessive force, including firing live ammunition and unnecessary tear gas resulting in injuries and fatalities. Arbitrary arrests and detention are rampant with individuals being held without trial, sometimes for extended periods. In a number of cases, what we see is abduction of citizens by plain-clothed gun-wielding men who take these people to unknown places. And many have since been missing for years. For example, John Bosco Chibalama, who has been missing for over four years, yet the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Robin Anabanja, admitted that he was arrested by the state and he's in the hands of the state. Of late, the same is happening even to members of parliament. We saw what happened in the past to Honorable Segirinya, Honorable Sewanyana, and most recently to the Honorable Paul Akamba, who is one of us who belongs to the NRM. But he was abducted and for about three or so days, no one knew where he was. It is wrong, whether it happens to the opposition or to people from the ruling party. Right, Honorable Speaker, when these practices become normalized, because everyone gets to be a potential victim, that's what happens when we normalize them, as we are witnessing today. What's particularly disturbing, Right, Honorable Speaker, is the abdication of duty by the Uganda Human Rights Commission a body explicitly mandated to safeguard the rights of our citizens. This commission has shamelessly turned a blind eye to these atrocities, failing in its core responsibility to protect the vulnerable and uphold justice. This neglect not only emboldens the perpetrators, but also undermines the trust and faith of the people in our institutions that are meant to protect them. As a government in waiting, because we are, we shall continue to do whatever is possible within our reach, to bring about a positive change aimed at restoring the original glory of our country. I therefore implore each one of us, right honorable speaker, to reflect on these issues and act swiftly on them for the good of all of us and those who shall come after us. I beg to submit. Thank you. You know, last week uh, <coughs> when you called me the whip for Katonga, I told colleagues here that uh, since you are old, you understand our issues. Um, we are happy that you are a speaker, having gone through our training. We only pray that uh, 
what is disturbing Uganda is use that position to resolve, including of our grandparents retiring. The issue of retiring, then they can compare notes, as you said, when they are there in retirement. The issue I wanted to bring to your attention, uh, using that window of an OP, Mr. Speaker, we have uh, 36 FDC leaders who were kidnapped from Kenya by ESO and Ugandan military. I don't know whether Uganda simply walks into another country. We had had problems here with Rwanda because Rwanda was accused of coming into Uganda and kidnapping refugees. One of the 36 is actually registered refugee in Kenya. There, were, there was no extradition order. They had gone to attend a leadership training. They were kidnapped and kicked. And the authorities government will need to listen to them. While they were jointly picked by the army here and the Kenya, the Kenyans didn't beat them. They are only teasing them that for them they are chasing the whole, you go back to your home seven. But the point is, some of them were seriously beaten. We want government, Mr. Speaker, to tell us, under which arrangement did they go to Kenya to kidnap FDC leaders who had gone for leadership training? Why did they beat them? And they should tell us why they, among the 36, because the, one of the 36 is a refugee who left Uganda, registered with the UNHSR as a refugee. So, Mr. Speaker, that is my prayer. I thought we should benefit from having a, an FDC in the chair to have this matter, <laughs> to have this matter raised. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. After the general, I think you can from the words of Honorable Semuji. Uh, Honorable Member, I, I am not aware that any people were abducted. What I know is that 36 people whom you say are from FDC, I don't know, were charged in court for terrorism. Procedure? Mr. Speaker, for the last 22 years I've been a lawyer, and my only friend, the Honorable Chiriwa Chwanuka, having been a lawyer even much longer, knows that a lawyer only acts on instruction. The instructions of the Attorney General are standing instructions in, under the Constitution, 119, and they only relate to matters of law. Now, we are dealing with matters involving the deployment of forces out of the country that managed to go and won Kisum, managed to go and get back these Ugandans. I don't want to speculate on how they got them, whether they kidnapped them, whether they used the window of somebody's son who said he can march to Westlands in two weeks or not. And clearly that's not a matter for the Attorney General. The Attorney General can advise us on matters before court where they were placed under his hands. Issues to do with how they were arrested, abducted, and or kidnapped are issues to do with the minister responsible for security and therefore the docket of ESO. Or if it was police, the Minister of Internal Affairs and how he managed to cross the borders and noticed to get these young Ugandans. I am constrained to seek your procedure guidance and direction. Because you asked Attorney General uh, Government and uh, we have the Prime Minister here, the Attorney General volunteered, which is very uncommon professionally. Uh, is a member of the front bank. This is the executive, okay? This is the executive, and they work together, okay? So if he, if he finds that it's not okay with him, he can always say it, and we, we cannot force him on the matter. Yeah. I thank my learned friend 
for recognizing that I've been at the bar much longer, <laughs> likely to have more knowledge about the law that we does. Uh, what I was saying, right honorable speaker, is that these people were charged, they are before court, and if there's any issues of them being beaten, wrongly arrested, can be raised in court at the appropriate time, and we have laws that deal with that. If in fact a person was tortured at the time of his arrest, that case would be dismissed. So that is a good, that is a good defense you can put before the court. Thank you. Thank you. Now, our honorable colleagues, I think what is very important is that there is an acknowledgement from the government that these people are with them and they are already before court. Okay, I think since they are already before court, honorable colleagues. Yes, honorable seven. Mr. Speaker, under what arrangement? That's not a matter of court. Under which arrangement did you go to a Catholic church in, in Kenya and kidnap people and bring them without necessary legal documents? Right, honorable manner in which people are, are collected, if at all, from a neighboring country or another country is prescribed by law. And we are saying that these people were charged, they are in court, they are properly before court. And if you think, if you think, if you think the procedure was not done properly, then you can actually be a good witness to support their release. With the national importance, margins and all that, I'm doing under PM's time. Next item. Omusumba yena asaba na agamba baka ubre gagende wa kumuma. Kumi na asadu. Nenda mwenye kwa ya kumusumba yena kumusumba. Ilambi ya President wange. Chaseka. Betuwa sababa jeba tusabire teba kosechi. Teba la vise. Parliament is not a platform for business. It's a place where we talk about issues that concern the common person. I had never seen them made into beggars. Senior citizen begging on their soldier. <laughs> Ugena kwe kalakasa paka, uza paka kumbi ya kumbi.